Hello, my name is Samantha Hagen, and I am a technical sales representative here at Magitech, and I've been with the company for almost two years. Hi, and my name's BJ Nault. I'm also a technical sales representative, and I've been with the company for about a year now. So good morning or good afternoon, depending on where you're viewing this from. We are so happy to be here, and today our first webinar is about what is a data logger. We'd like to let you know that there is a panel on the right-hand side of your screen. Feel free to submit questions at any point in time. So let's just start with the definition of a data logger. What is a data logger? It is basically an electronic device that records data over time. Some of the key parameters that we record are temperature, pressure, humidity, but it could also be other things like shock, current, or voltage. And now we have a brief video for you all to watch on what is a data logger. So now that we know more about what a data logger is, let's get into a few key definitions that we should all know. Sure. Why don't we start with calibration? So a basic definition of calibration is to check, adjust, or standardize the measurement instrument. And it's against a known value or an approved model. So in Magitech's case, we calibrate our data loggers either in baths or chambers and compare those readings to the readings of our reference equipment. Okay, so it sounds like we use calibration to make sure that our loggers are as accurate as possible when they leave the facility. Yes, exactly. Okay, great. So let's talk about validation and verification. These terms are similar, but they are slightly different. Uh, validation is the action of proving the accuracy of something, whereas verification is the process of establishing the accuracy of something. So why is this important? So many of our clients um, they are making things to make us have a better quality of life, whether to be healthier or safer. They're using instruments such as autoclaves or incubators or refrigerators or freezers. And through the validation and verification process, they're using our loggers to make sure that their instruments are as accurate as possible. Right. So it sounds to me like our internal calibration process is making sure that our instruments are accurate while our customers' validation and verification process are making sure that their instruments are accurate. Correct. They're using our loggers to make sure that all their equipment is working perfectly. Perfect. So now let's talk about compliance. What does it mean to be compliant? Basically being in accordance with a set of regulations or significant requirements 
One that comes to mind is 21 CFR Part 11, the FDA requirement. We deal with this on a daily basis a lot in the medical field. Our secure software aids in that with electronic signatures, audit trails, validation, and it's just a really beneficial tool for the medical field. Yeah, it definitely sounds like it's something that's important to them. And speaking of the medical field, let's talk about some of the key industries that we work with. We can start with food processing. So in food processing, uh, a lot of them are using our loggers for cooking applications, cooling applications, shipping or storage. It could be for uh, meat, it could be for sausage or beef jerky, it could be for fish or other seafoods. Um, it could be used in baking. A lot of our baking companies are using our loggers to send them through, say, a conveyor oven to map the temperature in the oven or maybe even map the product as it's going through. Um, a lot of our food companies want to um, kind of either measure a part of the process, maybe just cooking, or it may be just storage. And then we have other companies that want to use our loggers to actually monitor the whole process from start to finish. Great. So now let's talk about the medical industry and life sciences. So our devices can be used for validating ovens, incubators, refrigerators. There are a lot of unique applications for this industry. Uh, one that comes to mind is ETO sterilization. Uh, they are required to monitor humidity and temperature levels to make sure that they've reached a sufficient level of sterilization. Great. So it sounds like the medical industry is probably one of our most popular clients. Absolutely. All right, we deal with them on a daily basis. Um, let's talk about manufacturing in the industrial sector. Um, this could be a, a warehouse that wants to map the warehouse for temperature and humidity. It could be a manufacturing facility that wants to monitor their facility for temperature and humidity as well. Um, it could be a cement company that needs to uh, monitor the temperature of cement as it's curing. It could be even the oil and gas industry that wants to monitor line pressure or a water company that needs to monitor line pressure as well with one of our uh, pressure loggers. Um, a lot of our uh, manufacturers have to ship their product to an end user. Some of these items that they're shipping could be a $10,000 item or a million dollar item. And they could even use one of our shock loggers to attach it to that item uh, to make sure that when they're shipping this halfway across the world that when it gets to their end user that nothing has happened to it. Great. So we've just talked about a couple of industries and several different applications. So BJ, when a customer puts this device through its cycle, how do they then retrieve that data? Great question. So first I'm going to start actually with starting the logger and then I'll get right to your question. So with all of our loggers we have a corresponding interface cable. Um, this cable connects to a computer which works with our software. Um, the logger would either be plugged in or put in a docking station. With our software, you can easily start the logger. You're going to select a reading rate. You may want the logger to record once every second, or once every minute, or once every six hours. Um, once you get the logger started, you can take the logger, place it out in the field for your application, and then to get back to your question, um, to access the data. So when you're done doing your application, you can bring it back to the computer. You're either going to plug it in, put it in the docking station, and then you can download all the data easily into our software. Um, you can put it into a graph report, a data table report, or a statistic. This is saved in the software as a data set or even a report. Um, you can also export these to Excel if you wanted to save an Excel, an Excel file of this report on your desktop. Um, part of our software too, we also have a, like a wireless logger like this temperature and humidity logger here. With our wireless loggers, you, you have an antenna plugged into your computer instead of an interface cable. And the logger can communicate with the antenna, and you can actually have these loggers run in real time where you can see the graph of the report as the logger is recording. Part of our wireless service, too, is we also have cloud services. So you can do that with the computer running at all times with our software running. If you create a cloud account, you can access this information remotely. You can simply go to our cloud services website, log in with a username and a password, and you'd be able to see that data live as well. In some of our clients, there's actually another way to access the cloud. Um, some of our clients don't want to have a dedicated computer to, to have cloud services. 
We also offer an antenna that's called a cloud relay that just needs an internet connection. Then the logger would communicate with the cloud relay antenna. And again, as long as you had an internet capable device such as a cell phone or a tablet or a laptop, you could go right to our cloud services website. You could log in with a username and a password and get that information in real time as well remotely. Great. So, I mean, it sounds like our software is just incredibly easy to use and customizable depending on our customers' needs. Correct. Our software, it's very intuitive. It's easy to use. Um, there's a lot of customizable options. I didn't get into everything here today. There's lots of things that our software can do. Also, if you go to our website, we do have some videos on how to use our software that have come in very handy. Awesome. So now we would like to open it up to our viewers. If there are any questions, please submit them now. We will be more than happy to answer them. Okay, BJ, how big is a data logger? <laughs> Good question. So our loggers really vary in size. Um, they tend to be small in nature, um, but the size is really dependent on the logger. Um, you can find that out on our website, or you can definitely send in an email request and we can get you that information right away. Sure, great. Can a data logger measure more than one parameter? Definitely. We have loggers that measure, uh, can read and record temperature and pressure or temperature, pressure, and humidity. So it's something that definitely can be done. Awesome. Uh, do they need to be plugged in? So most of our data loggers work on a battery. So uh, they don't need to be plugged in. Some of our loggers do have an option to be plugged into a power source, in which case the battery would just be used as a backup. Great. How long is the battery life of a data logger? All right, this is a good question. So uh, our loggers, it really varies on the logger how long the battery will last. So depending on the type of application, it could be a few days to uh, many years. Um, one of the biggest effects on battery life is what you set the reading rate at. So if you were to have a logger and set the reading rate at once a second, it's obviously going to burn the battery quicker than if it was to read and record, say, once every hour. Gotcha. Okay, great. How often do they need to be calibrated? So all the loggers, when they leave our facility, are fully calibrated. So they're good to go once they leave here. Um, there's no set date on how often they need to be calibrated, but most clients will send them back to us to be calibrated annually. Awesome. Can I view data on my phone? Good one. So if you are using our cloud services with a wireless data logger, as long as your phone is internet capable, you could go right to our cloud services website and log in with a username and password and have direct access to the information. Great, thank you. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have today for questions. Please feel free to contact us at info at magtech.com. We will be more than happy to answer any further questions you have. There is also a poll on the right-hand side of your screen. If you could please complete that, we would really appreciate your feedback. Thanks again for joining us. Thank you.